Hey everyone, in this video, ChatGPT is going to teach us about continuity and differentiability. We're transitioning into a slightly more complex topic, functions in real analysis. Two of the most important concepts regarding functions in real analysis are continuity and differentiability. A function f is said to be continuous at a point c if the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to f of c. If this condition holds for all points c in its domain, we say the function is continuous. Differentiability at a point involves the existence of the derivative of a function at that point. If a function is differentiable at a point, it means the function has a well-defined quote-unquote slope or rate of change at that point. Consider the function f of x equals x squared for all real numbers x. Is the function f continuous? Why or why not? And is the function f differentiable? Why or why not? The answer is yes to both questions. f of x equals x squared is a parabola, which is continuous and differentiable. Now, there are many different answers to this question. For example, we could say yes, because f is a polynomial. I remember learning in Calculus 1 that all polynomials are continuous. However, this sort of answer kicks the can down the road. So instead, I'm going to rely on the delta epsilon proof. Now, it's been a decade since I've done this stuff, so... Bear in mind, I might get this wrong, and hopefully ChatGPT can help me learn from my mistakes. For all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for all x, the absolute value of x minus c being less than delta means that the difference in outputs is less than epsilon. I'm pretty sure this is the definition of continuity at x equals c. We need to show that f is continuous everywhere. So I just realized that by starting my proof with let epsilon be greater than zero. I'm quantifying my epsilon before I quantify this arbitrary number C. So instead we're gonna say, let C be a real number and then let epsilon be greater than zero. Now I'm gonna look at this portion a little bit further. So we can replace F of X with X squared and we can replace F of C with C squared, which is less than epsilon. We can rewrite this as X minus C times X plus C is less than epsilon now when we try to prove this we get to assume that x minus c is less than delta and we get to define delta to be whatever we want and here we have an x minus c now i realize that working backwards from the conclusion here is not a good idea let me try this again the absolute value of x squared minus c squared is equal to the absolute value of x minus c times x plus c which is less than or equal to the multiplication of the absolute values. And because of this quantification here, our delta can be dependent on epsilon. The problem I'm at now is with this x plus c. What do we do with this x plus c? I have one idea. We could say that this is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus c times the absolute value of x minus c and then plus 2c. And then we can use the triangle inequality to separate the absolute value of the sum as the sum of the absolute values. So this is the absolute value of x minus c times the absolute value of x minus c plus the absolute value of 2c. Now, ideally, we want this thing to be less than epsilon. Now, we get to say that this is less than or equal to delta times delta plus the absolute value of 2c. But I'm realizing now that depending on what c is, we're not gonna be able to get this number arbitrarily close to zero. Let me think about what else we can do here. Well, if we want this to be less than epsilon, then we can focus on this and see if we can solve for delta. But I don't think that's gonna work. So we must have done something wrong with this plus two C. Yeah, this parabola doesn't dip below the X axis for infinitely many values for delta. Well, this is a point where I'm officially stuck. And this is a great learning experience because ChatGPT can help me learn from this. So I'm gonna explain to ChatGPT that I understand the definition of continuity and then I tried using that definition to try to determine how I need to bound delta so that I can prove this in the end. But I keep running into this algebraic problem here. So I must have used the wrong strategy and approach in trying to bound this by epsilon. So let's see if ChatGPT can help me. So here's me redefining continuity at x equals c for ChatGPT. And I'm doing this because I want ChatGPT to know that I understand what this means in terms of the standard metric which is the absolute value on the real numbers so i'm going to say yes but i'm stuck on the proof okay so this is my explanation of what happened 
and hopefully ChatGPT can help me. Let's move on to number two for now. Now the definition of differentiability means that this is well-defined. Now we can rewrite this function notation as x plus h squared minus x squared all over h. We can simplify this a little bit. We can cancel the x squareds to get the limit as h approaches zero of 2xh plus h squared all over h. And from here, we can cancel this h with that h and one of those h's to get the limit as h approaches zero of 2x plus h, which is just 2x. So this is that proof for ChatGPT. However, I do think that I could be more specific about this answer considering I keep saying the limit as h approaches zero. In real analysis, limits have to be proven very carefully, and that isn't really done here. However, also in real analysis, you learn shortcuts about limits and so that you don't have to go through every single excruciating detail every single time you do a derivative. So I'm hoping ChatGPT can accept this answer. So I'll put a comment saying I could probably be more rigorous about the limit. Okay, so these are going to be my two answers for ChatGPT, and both are a little bit insufficient, to be honest, but hopefully ChatGPT can be a good teacher for me in this moment. Now, on this last section, we have next topics. I'm going to add which next topics I want to focus on. There's the concept of compactness in topology. That sounds pretty complicated. Um, I remember doing this at one point, but compactness is weird because I think it has to do with open coverage or something. There's calculus of variations, which I'm not quite sure what that means. <laughs> so I'm a little intimidated by that. Well, I, I know what variation is, but I thought calculus was all already about variation. So the calculus of variations, I don't know what that term means. Uh, measure theory and Lebesgue integration. I learned this once in grad school very briefly, and I just remember this was really, really complicated. I didn't really understand Lebesgue integration other than that you can integrate functions that are very much discontinuous. I know the Lebesgue integral is a lot more encompassing than the Riemann integral. I know measure theory has to do with like the length of a set or something like that, but this stuff's pretty advanced for me. I, I might have to save this for later. Uh, Fourier series and Fourier transforms. That sounds pretty interesting. And the complex plane and complex function. So I'm going to say these all seem pretty advanced for me. So maybe we can jump to topology and open sets, even though that's kind of what topology is about. I just want ChatGPT to recognize that I don't really know a lot about open sets. And so I definitely wouldn't know a lot about the concept of compactness in topology. So hopefully this guides ChatGPT in the right direction. Let's see. It's great to see your enthusiasm to tackle more advanced topics. You've correctly identified that the function f of x equals x squared is both continuous and differentiable for all real numbers x. Your attempt to prove the continuity is along the right lines. For your first question, you are very close. Your approach to proving continuity is correct. Let's just formalize it a bit more. To prove continuity at an arbitrary point c, we need to show that for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta than the absolute value of f of x minus f of c is less than epsilon. So I'm pretty sure that this is the definition that I had originally. This means that we need to control the expression x squared minus c squared. I like how they worded this. Like that's super precise verbiage here that I think a teacher would overlook. We need to control this expression. So that is what I was trying to do, uh, which indeed equals the absolute value of x minus c times the absolute value of x plus c. Oh, it equals. I said it was less than or equal to, but it equals. Uh, to control the term x plus c, we can cleverly choose delta. If we select delta equals 1, then the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta implies that negative 1 is less than x minus c, which is less than 1, which leads to negative 1 minus c is less than x, which is less than 1 plus c. Let me see what they're trying to do here. Assuming without loss of generality that c is positive, if C is not positive, we can flip the inequalities. This leads to negative one is less than X, which is less than C plus one, which leads to one minus C, which is less than X, which is less than one plus C. If we add C to everything here, this should be negative one plus C is less than X is less than one plus C. Well, I guess this is still true because if we add C to everything here, then we would get negative one plus C is less than X, but negative one minus C is less than negative one 
plus C. So that means that this is still true, assuming that C is positive, of course. This leads to negative one is less than X, which is less than C plus one. Okay, I understand this. That's from the step above here. Uh, but why is X greater than negative one here? So I'm a little confused on this step here. And then we have the absolute value of X plus C is less than C plus two. Where did the C plus two come from? Now choose delta equals the min of one and the epsilon over C plus two. Then for this delta, if X minus C is less than delta, then we get this giant string here. This completes the proof. Okay, so I guess what I don't understand in this proof is right here. Why is it that X is greater than negative one? And why is the absolute value of X plus C less than C plus two? I understand the trick of selecting delta equals one and then doing delta equals the min of one and something else. That kind of makes sense, but yeah, there are a couple things wrong with this proof, I think. And so I'm gonna regenerate the response. Okay, so let's see if this second answer is better. Okay, in this new proof, this looks correct. X is less than C plus delta, but this seems weird. The absolute value of X plus C, we would think is less than the absolute value of X plus the absolute value of C. And then I think we can bound the absolute value of X with a C plus delta term. I think that's kind of what we did in the last video, but I'm not sure how they got this. How is it that the absolute value of X plus C is less than the absolute value of C plus delta. This would imply that the absolute value of X is less than delta. And I don't see that anywhere here. This also seems different. So it seems that ChatGPT is getting some errors here, which is a little concerning. Maybe you all in the comment section can help me understand what I need to tell ChatGPT to fix this. For the differentiability, your proof is fundamentally correct. Your knowledge from calculus is applied well. However, when Diving deep into real analysis, the manner in which limits are dealt with becomes much more rigorous. Progress. You started venturing into real analysis, first with sequences and now with the continuity and differentiability of functions. Your foundational understanding of calculus is clear, but you're now getting a taste of the rigor that real analysis demands. Now we're going to go into topology and open sets. Thanks everyone. And if you all can help me understand what ChatGPT is doing here and how I can help ChatGPT improve, that would be greatly appreciated. Thanks everyone and I'll see you in the next video.